I'm so excited about this training. I literally just got off of it. So I'm talking about this right after it happens. And I'm still like on fire right now because I did one hour of training and I introduced the new four week template system for the weekly emails. It's going to make everything so simple for you to go out and just do this email. It keeps it very simple. It's one you know, subject, one point of information each week. You just use them over and over every month. I also, the last hour, get into Q&A for the full hour of the second half of this and <laughs> just really let you guys have it. I want you to know when you're watching this, I'm really a nice guy. <laughs> All right. So, you know, if I come off a little hard on some of these uh, answers, just know it comes from love. All right. It really does. Um, it's like, let me just shake, shake you loose on this. But the Q&A session was crazy good. I mean, talked about prospecting and going deep with prospects uh, on motivation, a lot of weekly email questions, tons of stuff. All right. You're really going to enjoy this. I can just tell you. All right. So definitely listen to the whole thing. Listen to it while you're at the gym. Watch the first half as a, you know, trying to really understand the weekly email system. Uh, I'm screen sharing. So I'm showing you everything. I'm walking you through the process. I'm trying to go as slow as possible so you can get every little piece uh, and understand every little thing that this offers. Um, and then I would just really get into that Q and a session and I just, I'm fired up because I know that you're going to get a lot out of this. I know everybody that was there live, got a lot out of this and, uh, I'm excited about just the ripple effect of what this one video is going to do for the industry for decades from now. So anyway, smash the like button, hit subscribe, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think and let's get right into it. Boom. What is up everybody? Um. <laughs> we got us quite a few people here. Let me know where you're from in the chat. And we're going to dive right in. Um, I'm really excited today. Number one, I got a got me a, a nice little Coke Zero here and a little Fresca ready to rock. Um, this is exciting because matter of fact, you know what? Go ahead and throw in the chat. Um if you've had some success with the weekly email, because I've been getting so many messages. Um, I mean, I, I mean, I get messages just constantly anyway. Um, and especially like over the years, uh, from you guys, um, just big, huge successes, but it seems like here lately, I've been getting a lot more, um, weekly email, uh, success stories, you know, um, I mean, I can't even like there was an agent that did it for two weeks and sold a million dollar house. There was a, you know, an agent that talked to a person six months ago, didn't talk to him since, did the weekly email, boom, got a listing. Just story after story after story after story. Let's see. Lots of referrals. Uh, da, 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 da. Got a listing off your first email. Let's see, da, 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 da. about 15 people in the database has done a deal. 20 deals over the last two years with the email. Let's see, let's see. Picked up six deals this year alone with the weekly email. I was going to like do some testimonials and stuff, but I was like, no, nah, let's just let people comment the success that they've had with the weekly email. That's even more powerful than, you know, me showing you screenshots of messages that I've gotten. Mm. Cool. Uh, do, 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 do. Cool, cool, cool. So what I want to do today is I put aside two hours for this. And what I want to do is I want to go through these new four templates. These uh, week one, week two, week three, week four templates for you. Um, show you where they are. Show you how to use them. Um, kind of give you the layout here so that it just makes it really extremely simple for you to go out and execute this strategy 
that literally gets you to a residual business as soon as you build this database up to the point that you're making the amount of money you want to make. I mean, that's the entire premise of, of what we're doing here. I mean, let me just break it down for you really quickly. The entire goal of prospecting, okay, is to build a database so big that you never have to prospect another day in your life, right? Can I get an amen? That should be your goal here. Not the horizon shouldn't be, I want to be number one in my market and, you know, you know, prospect forever, right? I watched two agents literally pass away and die making cold calls and they weren't doing a weekly email and they, and you know what else they weren't doing? Buying rental properties. Everybody on this call should be buying at least one rental property a year. There's going to become a day when you're tired of selling, tired of being a real estate agent. And you may think that day is never going to come, but it is. And you can't wait until you get to that day to start trying to build a portfolio to step out of the business, right? The goal should be, you know, prospect as hard as I can, three to five to eight to 10 years, build a million dollar business that continues to produce a million dollars with just doing a weekly email, take all the money and buy rental property and ride off into the sunset. That needs to be your mantra. I mean, that needs to be your entire uh, outlook. You know, too many of us as real estate agents, we can only see to the point of being number one in our market. And like, you don't realize like <laughs> when you get there and January 1st clicks over and, and, and your income goes from that million bucks to now you're back to zero and you got to climb this million dollar mountain again, it's daunting. And after a couple of years of that, it's like, okay. Let me try to figure out how to how to play this passive game, right? Let me try to get out of this. Let me build a portfolio. Nobody's talking about that. Nobody's, a lot of you aren't doing that. You need to be thinking about it. All right. Um, and I mean, like <laughs> you're a real estate agent trying to sell real estate, but you don't own real estate. You're not trying to buy real estate. You need to buy real estate. I've got about 40 properties and I'm buying properties every month. So this is just a little side note. I'm going to get to the weekly email training. But my goal right now is to buy at least on average one a month for the next five years. I'll have 100 properties in five years. And within 20 years, I'll pay that off. If they average a half a mil right now, that's $50 million. If they double in, in value over the next 20 years, that's $100 million worth of real estate paid off. Probably paying me a good two, three hundred thousand a month, free and clear. That's my plan for the next twenty five years to own a hundred to two hundred million worth of real estate, just little houses all around my market, commercial, fourplexes, duplexes, single family. That's what I'm into. Uh, everybody can do it. Super easy. All right, but step one is make a million bucks a year. How do you do that? Well, you you. You can't do it just cold calling. You can't do it like just, you know, prospecting and Zillow leads and social media. You've got to have a system on the back end where no one ever forgets who you are. Bingo, weekly email. Really super simple stuff. All right. So, oh, but the, here's how I want to lay today, this, these next couple hours out. You know, hour one, I want to do training. And I want to just screen share, show you everything that's going on with the new templates. Okay. Hour two, Q&A. Just whatever you need. Questions about the weekly email. You know, if we can gear it towards a weekly email, that's great. If you want to ask about other things, that's fine too. But just want to spend some time with you guys today. All right. Still got a lot of people coming in. Okay. So first off, if you don't have a, an account with Constant Contact, okay, to do this, you're not going to have access to these templates. So that's step number one. All right. And the way you do that is just go to constantcontact.com backslash ZTD. That's the landing page where uh, you'll fill that out and then they'll reach out to you. And if you do this today... They're going to give you 30% off of your first three months, which is already cheap. It's already nothing, but they're going to give you 30% off of nothing for the next three months. Okay. 
All right, let me put that just in the chat so you guys see the link. Now, you want to have a database outside of your brokerage CRM. Like a lot of people use their brokerage CRM. I'm a I'm a I'm not a, I'm not a fan of that at all. I like to have my own database outside of whatever, you know, they control and they have you know, I don't, I don't like that. Never have, never will. So I like having this separate database. I don't even use whatever my brokerage gives me. Um, although a lot of the CRMs brokerages have are amazing. I just want my own database. All right. Cool. Let's see. Let's dive right up in here. Now, once you have your constant contact database. All right. Um. Let's see. Do, 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 do. What what arm do I use? Are you saying Serium? Constant contact. It's the only only Serium I need. All all I need is people to get my weekly email. I don't need anything else. What what else do I need? Nothing. I can tell you nothing. Um, and if you guys have anything in the comments of something else I need outside of just sending my database a weekly email. Um, you know, please put it in the comments. I'd love to hear what you guys think might be that you, that you might need outside of just making sure your clients get a weekly email. All right. All right. How do I follow up with prospects? I just call them, maybe text them, maybe whatever, whatever the follow-up is based on what they want to do. I don't need a CRM to <laughs> to make me remember that somebody wants to buy something. All right. I make a list on a notebook of people that are hot that want to buy and sell soon. And I follow up with them from there. When everybody is like when people are um, spending, think about this. When people are, you know, spending time, putting data in a CRM, I'm out here selling properties. If you spend 30 minutes a week putting stuff in a CRM, that's 26 hours a year, right? You know how much damage I can do in 26 hours in a year of like man hours? That's crazy. That could be the difference in you doubling your business and you're putting information in a CRM you'll never use. People don't care if you remember their dog's birthday. <laughs> they don't. They don't care. All right. So once you have your constant contact all set up, this is already in there. Okay. Move some stuff around so I can actually, there we go. People are still coming in. All right. So like when you go to, when you go in constant contact, this is what it looks like right here. All right, you're going to go create, you know, you know, create an email. Okay. And then the next thing that's going to pop up is this window. You're going to hit to create an email. Okay. So, and, and I see a comment here. If, if you guys sign up for constant contact, but not through me, just email me, ricky underscore caruth at yahoo.com, and I'll connect you with constant contact, and they'll put you under the Ricky uh, account. That way you can that we can get in there. All right, so you click email. Now, once you, once you click email, up here at the top, you'll see these templates. You'll see all templates, layout templates, blah, blah. What you'll do is you'll click on your organization name will be right here. So when you sign up for Constant Contact, if you put Remax as your organization name or the Daily Group or whatever your organization name was, when you signed up for Constant Contact, it's going to be right here. Okay, you're going to click on that. Within that uh, template file for your organizational name, that's where you're going to see Zero to Diamond Weekly, the weekly templates, and Zero to Diamond General, which the general template is just one template. It's kind of like the one we've been using 
for all of them. But now we have the four-week template right here. Week one, two, three, four. Then I'm going to go through with you right now. Okay, so let me move some stuff around so I can get there. Let's see, where is my constant contact? Boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Let's see, is this, this is it. All right. I'm like moving the chat around. I'm moving you guys coming in around. Okay, you just signed up, but the platform's confusing. Well, it shouldn't be too confusing, and that's why I'm doing this, so I can kind of show you around a little bit, okay? So don't don't make it harder than it is. All right, so when, you, when we go here, okay, this is kind of, this is contacts. We're right here, you know, your home, whatever. You know, go to create. This window's going to pop up. You're going to go to create an email okay now when you go to create an email you're going to see right here instead of zero diamond weekly like i have it's going to look just like this right here for you it's going to say all templates layout templates and then your organization name click on your organization name when you do that it's going to bring up the subfolders, which are going to be the Zero Diamond four week folder and the Zero Diamond general folder, which is right here. Here's the weekly folders. Okay. All right. Uh, hope, I hope this is easy for you guys to, to digest here the way I'm doing this and going through it slow so that you guys know where everything is. You know, if you have a question, throw it in the chat. I'm, I'm watching the chat. As, as closely as I can. All right. So here we are. Check this out. I got week one. Okay. This is going to be the market stats of the month. Week two is going to be restaurant of the month. Week three is going to be deal of the month. Week four is going to be news of the month. All right. Um, okay. Terry Hunter, like if you are not under if you're not in my ecosystem with constant contact just email me ricky underscore caruth at yahoo and i'll make sure that they place you under my affiliation um, but if you are just follow the instructions here all right so let's let's dive into this market stats of the month real quick right i want to hit all these and i want to kind of scan through these so that so that you all right my email let's put it right here in the chat Let's put it right here. So it's just Ricky, like I said, underscore Caruth at yahoo.com. Booyah. There's not a promotional code, guys. So you're going to use this link. I'm sorry, if guys, if I'm repeating, guys that have been here for a while, there's people just coming in. Constantcontact.com backslash ZTD. All right. Fill that out today. They're going to reach out. They're going to give you 30% off the first three months. It's cheap already. So it's going to be nearly nothing. And you're going to have access to this. It makes things really simple. Let's dive into the first week. So what's cool is, is when you when you do this, they're actually going to populate your logo here. You're not going to have to add it. It's already going to be here. They're going to have your name, your phone number. I've already went in here and messed with this a little bit. That's why some of my stuff is here. Um, so they're going to customize your stuff in here. Like at the bottom of these emails is already going to be your stuff, your headshot, your phone numbers, and all this stuff, okay? So you can kind of play around with it if you want. Now, something to understand is these yellow blocks, Okay. These yellow blocks are designed to train you and teach you uh, how to use the email. Okay. And when we get when we get through learning what these yellow blocks tell us, we're going to delete these boxes. Okay. Uh, let me go. Let me go here so I can actually show you. Let's see. Let me do it from here so I can actually. Okay. Now I'm actually in where I can actually edit this and and all that i'm gonna i'm gonna show you guys some tricks and stuff so stay tuned a lot of people coming in i'm doing like 15 things at once all right 
So this first block, this is just really important stuff here. Okay. I branded my subject. Okay. Add your own branded subject and preheader lines before sending. Okay. You got to understand that you got to brand your subject. Okay. So let me go here and open up another tab just to show you guys my email really quickly. So you can understand kind of what I'm saying here. And as I'm here, I'm going to show you guys. Okay, so this is the email we're making now. Okay, so like uh, two weeks ago, here's my email, right? Um, it goes out to 19,000 people. And last week I had 73, almost 7,400 people open the email, all right? The week before that, 7,500. The week before that, 74. The week before that, 74, 74. 7,700, 7,800, 7,824, 7,828. So you can see I'm right there between the 7,400 and 7,800 people opening my email every week. Okay. And the way that the reason that that happens is two things. One, I didn't just throw emails in my, in my thing, right? I might've thrown some in there, but a lot of these were organic. I talked to them. They gave me their emails. These are real people, number one. Number two, in my emails, I'm always giving my opinion, my two cents, what I think about whatever I'm sending them. A lot of you are sending emails out and you're just saying, here's some information. Talk to you later. And it's like, wait a minute. If you would say, here's some information and here's what I think about it, people are really going to start opening your emails every single time because they're going to want to know what you think about this information, okay? But if you dig in here, you'll see every single email has this same subject. Uh, here, Gulf Coast Market Report and the date. That's what I've done for literally, let's see, since 2007, late 2007, I've been doing this. So what is that? 15 years, almost 15 years. Well, it's getting late in the year. It, we're getting close to 15 years I've been doing this. I've missed two weeks. There were two weeks that I missed in 15-year period. One was because we got hit by an unexpected hurricane. Didn't know it was going to hit that hard. I can't remember what the other thing that happened was. But I'll admit, I missed two weeks, all right, out of 15 years. But my subject here is always the same. The problem that you guys are doing is that you are... You're trying to draw your 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 people, you're trying to draw your your audience to open the email with the subject. And so you're trying to put this headline for the subject to try to draw them in to click on it. And what it's doing is it's making people delete your email. Why? Because they can't really um they can't really sift it, you know, out of it being spam because like they're not you're not branding a subject. You know, they're, they, you know, when you look at your emails, you're just like deleting them in bulk. Like, okay, here's 10 emails that are, are spam. We'll delete those together. This one's good. I'm going to keep that one. The next five are, are deletable. Well, when they do that, they're either looking at the subject or the person sending it. You can't really see both at the same time unless you do it really slow. So what's happening is, is if you're having a headline for every email every week and it's a di it's different every week, then they're like, you know, they could, it could get swept under the rug and deleted a spam. Okay. Where you need to use the tagline to get people to open the email is the pre header text, the pre header. Okay. And that way, when they see the, the subject, they know it's you. And then the pre header text is what draws them in to open the email. So, for example, the way you do that is you click right here. You click here, and this is where you start messing around with it, okay? So I want it to be from me. And then right here, it gives you a preview of what it's going to look like in their inbox, right? And so the subject, I want it to be Gulf, Coast Market Report, and the date, right? And then here's where I want to put something that's three or four words that really draws them in, right? condo prices you know explode right 
Um, you know, new restaurant. in Gulf Shores, right? Just stuff like that. Um, and you see right here exactly what it's going to look like in their inbox. This is important stuff, right? You are you need to brand that subject where like forever they know they're going to get that Gulf Coast market report. Okay. Um, you know, home, like uh, Gulf Coast home sales. Plummet. Right? Cool. Cool, cool, cool. I'll move on to something else. But that's really important, guys. Now, that's going to help with your open rate. That's going to help with your branding and everything else. Okay? So once we get that, boom, let's get rid of that block. Delete. Okay? Next is this tagline. We just want to know. Boom. Just want you to know that you're going to put your tagline here. So we're going to delete that block. We'll delete this little yellow block, and we're here. What's our tagline going to be? I don't know. Um, you know, like uh, hardest working realtor in, you know, Texas, you know, or something, right? I don't know what your tagline is going to be. This is where you're going to put it. And then like right here, you know, like, look at this. I mean, you could go right here. You could italicize that if you want to, to give it a little, you know, a certain kind of look, right? There's a lot of stuff you can, you can mess around with this and make it all look good. You see how this first name, last name, organization name, phone number is up. You know, I, you know, if I were looking at this, I would grab this spacer right here. I would go right here with it, and then I can play around with it and move this up to where it's symmetric. You you want symmetry with your emails, okay? I can go right here to design. If I don't like this green line, I can go here. Here's that green line. I can change that to white. I can change it to red. I can change it to whatever the color I want, okay? Let's change it to maybe white. Let's say I don't like that um that outer background. Boom, let's change it to white. All right, let's do an outer border. Let's see. Do, 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 you can do whatever you want. Okay. Now. Okay. So so that's kind of the top. Now this top part's going to be the same every time. It's going to be the same every time. You're not really going to change this at all for a while. You might end up changing it later on down the road or whatever. Right? But you're going to leave it the same for a while. Now now look at the image. Right, we're telling you in the image, replace this image every time. Okay, if you look at all my emails, if you look at all my emails right here, I'll put this link in the chat. You literally can see every single email. Um, to, to, to. Every single email here at the bottom since last November. So getting close to a year worth of emails. My personal emails I send out every every week to my clients. And what you'll notice is, look, high resolution, different picture. Okay? And this was last week's email. It just hits you in the face. It's like, bam, boom. Here's the new listings. You know, one question, can you believe 941 condos and 770 homes have sold along the Gulf Coast this year? Welp, it's true. And you can see the full list here. Boom. You click. You see the list. It's right there, black and white. Read all the condo stats. And then what did I do? I gave my opinions on it. I said, despite the historic run of mortgage rates in the last 18 months, our local market, along with the national market, has been resilient. 
Prices have held firm around all-time highs and closings are still happening every day. Where have we heard that one? Our business has been trucking right along thanks to our amazing clients like yourself. So I'm talking directly to them. Back in the Great Recession, as a young real estate agent who lost everything, he, see, I'm talking about myself and I'm and I'm giving my opinions and I'm and I'm I'm giving proof of uh, experience. I learned that closings do happen every day, regardless of market conditions, and that is uh, and that this business is built on the lifelong relationships that you build. So for that, I want to thank you. So it's like a heartfelt little uh, personal touch. And like the thing is, is most people aren't even making it that far because they're clicking on the new listings or they're clicking on what has sold. And so not very many people probably even made it this far. And then it's the same thing every week. Looking to buy or sell, interview me for the job, call my dad, right? Everything for sale. Here's the closings. Here we are. Bada bing, bada boom. All right. But the point was that every week it's a different picture. There was an excessive heat warning. So I used that the week before the beach. You want to do local pictures. Don't do generic national pictures. That's garbage. Do high resolution local pictures that show local landmarks, local restaurants, local listings, local events, local, local, local. When people open up these emails, they want to feel like they're, they're talking to family here. All right. So again, you're going to you're going to use a different picture every time. Why a different picture? Because it's going to give them a fresh feel. They're going to have a fresh feel. Okay, super fresh. Somebody said, "Where do those links go um to your website?" Yeah, they do. But just click on that link that I put in the chat there a couple minutes ago and you can see all the emails that I sent for the last year and click on all the links yourself and see where all they go and stuff. Use it for ideas. All right. And then next here is going to be replacing this headline. So every week you've got this headline. Well, before I get there, let me undo that. Before I hit that, let me, let me, let me dive into this. This is real important, guys. You need to have the new listings. You need to have links here that go to the new condos, new homes search. You need to have that on your email every week. This week's new listings. I let it go back two weeks. So if somebody missed it, missed, you know, they missed an email here or there, they're looking at two weeks worth of new listings at any time. Um, But this is real important because a lot of people will click on your weekly email just to see the new listings. All right, let's see where are we at on time. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. So, so let me, let me go through this. Like, uh, let's just say this right here is a link that you created just for an example. Uh, let's, let me mute you. Boom. Well, let's say that this is a link that you created right here. Um, that goes to new listings. So I'm going to copy that link. You just go here and you highlight whatever words you want to be hyperlinked. Okay, you click on this little figure eight symbol right there. You click on web page and you just paste the link right there and you hit insert. And now this new condos goes to whatever link you put there when you send the email out. You can use any links. No, I'm not using KB Core. I'm using constant contact. So, and it made no difference. See, boo, boo, boo. There he goes. Boo, 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 boo. All right. He can hear you. Yeah. I don't know how you guys are unmuting yourself, but anyway. Constant contact.com backslash ZTD. All right. There's the link right there. How much is constant contact? Real cheap. Okay. All right. So, so you want the new listings in your emails, guys, every week. You want those to be right there where people can get to them quick and even put uh, a link to where people can search for property if you have that on your website. Okay. A lot of people are going to open for email just for that. 
I'll need to talk to people to my website people about how to get a link to that. You can actually do it through your MLS. Go to your MLS and and go to the you know search the new listings and then create a hyperlink for your clients right there on MLS. When I started doing my web doing my emails, guys, I didn't even have a website, business cards, nothing. I didn't have constant contact either. I was doing it through Yahoo. I don't care about uh all that stuff, dude. I don't let nothing stop me from selling property at, at, at scale. You know, oh, you know, I have business cards. I don't care. Let me go talk to somebody who wants to buy or sell property. You know, oh, I'll have a website. I can't do my weekly email. You can just create links off of MLS and send it out. Get people the information, guys. Yeah, MLS hyperlinks are fixed. You have to make a new one every week. That's what I did. There's no excuses here. Zero. All right. So anyway, so we're placed the headline below. So every week we're going to have this headline. I'm going to go through each template with you, not as in detail as this one, because I'm kind of teaching you everything. But uh, I'm going to go through, I'm going to scan through each, every, each week template for you. And you're going to use these templates every month. You know, one, two, three, four, the next month. One, two, three, four, the next month. One, two, three, four. But we're going to replace this headline with something interesting like, you know, Gulf Coast housing stats. So that could be something right there. I would want this headline to be something more interesting, right? Like uh, something like this, for example. You know, condo prices up, you know. 2.4% from, let's see, 2.4% in July, something like that, right? And then, of course, that, I mean, like, okay, look at that, right? That looks silly, okay, right? That That's just too small for the for the headline, so let's, let's get it bigger, okay? Oh, now it's too close to the top. It kind of looks off-center. Let's go here and let's grab a spacer. Let's put it right here. These spacers are cool to use, right? You put them in here and then you can just kind of move stuff around wherever you want to, to make it look right, right? Try to, try to, try to make your emails look very symmetrical, okay? And then try to make it very simple for you guys right here, okay? You could just do average, you could do average sales price, right? In the area, you know, three, you know, 98, you know, 876. Okay. The next one, number of transactions, right? It could be, you know, 107. And you could actually put a link, right? So like right here, I talk about giving your opinion right here. Now, when you give your opinion, you know, people are like, oh, what do I put there? Give them your insights, right? You're you're out there, you're you're helping buyers, you're helping sellers, you're talking to people, even if they're not doing deals, you're on the inside of the market there. When people when people that read your email start to feel like you're giving them inside information about what's going on in the marketplace, you know, like um, like for example, like Okay, like uh, I'll just kind of write something here to give you guys an example. Okay, like uh, okay, um, these. All right, let's see. This price um is up. What I say, two point four percent earlier. This is hypothetical. Two point four percent. Um, from last July.
Ricky, we can't hear you. Ricky, we can't hear you. All right, testing. You in my back? You yeah. back? Okay. Where'd you lose me? We lost you about three minutes ago. Jeez. Okay. Well, in that case, um, let me just kind of reiterate what I'm doing here. What I was saying was that, did you guys hear that they want inside information of the market? Yes. Okay, yeah. cool, cool, cool. So like right here, I'm just giving you an example. This is just, just a, this, you know, just an example here, just to give you guys an idea. People want to know, like, you're the one out there talking to buyers, talking to sellers. Um, even if they didn't buy anything, you kind of know the vibe of the market way more than the people reading your email. They're out there, they're CPAs, they're doctors, they're lawyers, they're landscapers. They're not real estate agents. You're in it. Things that you take for granted that you know, even if you're a brand new agent and you're prospecting and you're talking to a couple of sellers a day, you haven't even done your first deal yet. Um, you have inside information because you've kind of got the vibe of the market way more than the general public. Okay. This is really valuable stuff that you need to be sharing with your with your database. So I'm just saying here, you know, I'm giving my opinion here. I'm writing this. Like this is how I do my emails. I literally sit down and 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 write just like I'm doing now. You know, this price is up 2.4% from last July. It's incredible considering the current mortgage rates. I showed three different buyers last weekend who all were very motivated. Two made offers um, and both, um, you know, missed out because of multiple offers on both properties, right? This is inside information. Okay. This is just an example. All right. Number of transactions, 107. You could write here, you could just say, you know, um, feel free to check out the list here. And then like do a couple of like little arrows click here and then just hyperlink that by highlighting it, clicking the figure eight symbol, clicking website, having the link ready and, and plugging it in there. And then they can actually look at those 107 properties that sold. I'm just coming up with this off the top of my head, guys. Okay. Number of new listings. This is another one, right? You can actually take the same link that you use up here for new listings and put it right here. Just throwing ideas out there for you. All this is going to be in there for you. And then you can kind of customize it, change the color of this stuff. You know, you can change the color of that, uh, you know, see all your listings, make sure that's hyperlinked to the page on your website or wherever your listings are. Okay. Um, and we're going to delete that block. All right. So that's pretty much it as far as this goes. I kind of took some time to go through it. So you just kind of understood. It's really simple. You know, one, two, three. All right. If you have questions, write them down right now because I'm fixing to blow through the other three weeks just to show them to you. And then I'm going to do, get into some Q&A. So if you have questions, just hang on to them and we'll get to them in just a second. All right. Now, when you... When you go now, when you when you send this email, okay. When you send this email, you're gonna be able to go here and go to all campaigns, and it's gonna show you all the emails that you sent. Okay, so after you've done this once, you're not gonna have to start from scratch again for for the first week of the next month. Okay. These yellow boxes will be, the yellow boxes that we deleted will be gone. All this will kind of be in there for you to just plug and play and just kind of switch some stuff around. So what you do is you'll go to that email where it was sent. You'll just click, go right over here and there'll be this button that says copy right here. And when you copy it, you know, that's what you're going to do. You know, if that was the week one you did, the next week, I mean, the next month when you do week one again, you're going to come in here and you're going to just copy the week one from last month. And then week two, you're going to copy the week two from last month. And then all you have to do is go in here, 
click here, change the date, change the preheader tax to whatever the, the hook's going to be to get them to open it. Come in here, change the picture, which is really easy. You just click on it and hit replace, right? You click, re you, you click replace and you may have a picture already uploaded that you want to use, or you can just say upload file. Pretty easy. So you'll just come in here, change the picture. If you don't have automatic links, you'll have to take, you'll have to change these links to the MLS links. If you're using MLS, change your headline, you know, give your opinions. And then the bottom is going to be the same every, every time. So, but a bing, but a boom, you're out real simple. And we're going to be hitting our clients just boom, boom, boom with the same stuff. Whereas it's a restaurant, it's a, uh, it's a deal of the month. It's the uh, news, the breaking news of the month. So let's get into the second week here. And I'm excited about this one. Okay, this is a cool one here. This is one of my faves right here. This is really, you know, built a lot of a lot of stuff, a lot of engagement in my emails. Okay. So, of course, you know, you know what to do here. We've went through all that. You know, when I do the restaurant pictures, let me find a restaurant one I did. Uh, let's see. Da -da see here's a restaurant one i did right here i put a picture of the restaurant and then i'm like when i say this was the best meal i ever had i'm not kidding and i was dead i'm dead serious that place that italian place in orange beach is the truth all right best lasagna I ever had in my life went back and had the um spaghetti meatballs Boo <laughs> booyah all right and then and then you see what I did here, right? Here's the menu, blah, blah, blah. And of course, and I say of course because my audience knows what I'm going to do. My audience knows what I'm going to do, right? Reply back for a chance to win a $100 gift card. My audience already knows what I'm going to do. When they see they see restaurant in the pre header text, they definitely going to open it. And they're going to reply back. Now, what's so cool is, is when they reply back, I'll get like, hundreds of people reply back. Well, guess what? I'll pick a winner and then I'll tell everyone, I'll, I'll, I'll email every single person, other person back and say, look, um, you know, I'm sorry you didn't win this time. Um, but listen, I'd love to take you there for lunch one day on me. Love to meet you there. And by the way, how's everything going? And I get into these incredible conversations, emailing back and forth, catching up with people, seeing how they're doing, seeing if they need anything, see if they're thinking about moving, if they're looking for rental properties. It's crazy the business I've gotten off of these emails. It's insane. I've been doing this for years. You don't have to do $100. You can do $20. You can do $50. You can do anything, right? People love free stuff. They're going to reply back, and now you're engaged. You're engaged. So anyway, let's see. Let me go. Let me find another one that I did. Um Here's another one that I did right here. Now, I actually didn't go. Now, oh, to reiterate what I was saying, what I said on the other one, I told my experience at the restaurant, how I went there. The lasagna was so great. I told them how I loved it because I went there and it was amazing. This was a restaurant that wasn't open. It was like literally open that day. And I wanted to make it like an announcement, you know, like this restaurant opened today. And so I hadn't been there yet. So, but I, but it is a sister it's it's like a franchise from a restaurant that I have been to a lot that I love. And so I talked about my experience there. I've been there many times over the years uh, growing up here, right? You see how I threw that in here? I've been there many times over the years growing up here. So that just, again, adds to the credibility of my experience locally. And it's always amazing. They just opened up a second location for the first time in Gulf Shores. Boom, boom, boom. Reply back to this email for a chance to win a $100 gift card. So this is something that I do very, very often. And I spend time emailing back and forth to everyone. So right here on the restaurant, you got to have a great, find a great high resolution picture of the restaurant. Do not use blurry, low resolution pictures on any of your emails. It shows unprofessionalism. 
people are going to say, this guy, this girl is a joke. That's what they're going to say. All right. Be professional with this. Now, right here, we're going to talk about the restaurant. The headline may be whatever, new restaurant, whatever. Put the restaurant, the address, put the website to the menu. And then right here, talk about your personal experience at the restaurant. Hey, I went there with my family. The service was amazing. I had the shrimp etouffee. It was to die for. You got to try it. Okay. Keep this around two to four sentences. Don't go crazy here. You got you to think. The reason why Amazon, Google, Apple, Facebook, uh, Uber, all those companies are so crazy successful is because they save people time. People want to to people want compress time. They when you compress their time and you get them what they need and they're in and out, they love you. If you talk a lot, they don't like you. If you write long emails, they don't like you. Short, sweet, to the point, boom, you're out. People scan sales emails. This is this could be considered a, a, a you know borderline sales email. And people look at these things literally, literally for one second. If they can't scan it and get what they need, new listings. Okay, what's the new restaurant? Okay, how? what have prices went up to? If they can't get that really fast, get in and get out and get on with their day, they're not going to open up any more of your emails. They're going to unsubscribe. So keep this very short and sweet. You see my emails. Uh, like, let me just pull up this one. You see how I do one sentence, big font, and space in between every sentence. I have a space. You see that space? No, I, I, I don't do emails. I mean, I don't do video in my emails. Um, Like, uh, for me, email is not a video platform for me. Because people want in and out. If I'm sending them a, even a 30-second video, they got to sit there for 30 seconds to watch it. They don't want to do that. Email is kind of like a blog. They want to get in and out. They want to look at it, read it, and go. They don't want to have to sit there for three minutes and watch a video, 30 seconds and watch a video. They're not going to do that, in my opinion, from, my, from what I've gathered. You guys may have different opinions. You want to put video in your email? Knock yourself out. I don't, I'm not opposed to it. it. I just don't believe in it for me. I don't do video at all. My emails, I'll do video on video platforms, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Instagram. I'll do videos on the video platforms. I don't believe this is a video platform. I look at this more as a, a blog style platform. People want to look at it, get in, get out. All right. But you see big font spaces in between my sentences. All right. And then of course, Ask the readers to reply back for a chance to this email for a chance to win a gift card to the restaurant. People love it. I don't put YouTube links on my emails. Guys, don't put YouTube links on your emails. It will take your clients to YouTube, and then YouTube sends them everywhere. They're going to say, oh, this 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 person loves uh, real estate in Dallas. So then what do you think YouTube's going to do? They're going to send them every real estate agent's video on YouTube. That's the algorithm. Don't send them to YouTube. You know, if you just if you just have to send them a video, embed the video from YouTube on your website on a page and send them the URL of that page. That way, at least you can try to minimize. That way you can keep them in your ecosystem. But I wouldn't. For me, I'm not even suggesting to do that. Okay, so that's it for the restaurant. It's really that simple. All this is the same as what, what we talked about. It's really that simple. High resolution of the of the restaurant. Here's what the restaurant is. Here's my experience. You know, reply back to win a gift card. Boom. Restaurant of the month. All right, let's move over to deal of the month. This was a really cool one. What we're going to do with this is we're going to find a listing on MLS, whether it's our listing. This, I mean, most of the time it's going to be your listing, right? Deal of the month. You're going to showcase one of your listings, but not always. 
Sometimes you don't have a listing. Sometimes you see a really good deal that's not your listing. Okay. Um, and 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 Lauren here makes a great point. She was trying to squeeze everything into one email. Market stuff, restaurant, local attractions. No, you just mentioned what you put in all in one email. That should be literally four weeks of emails. Do one thing per email, guys. Remember, people want in and out. They want something different every week. They want to feel freshness in the email. That's what's going to keep them coming back for more. And then the cherry on top is that it's your uh, opinions. You're giving your experiences. You're giving your story. They're getting to know you through the email. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, Robert on his email, he pastes a good still picture with a video arrow and click and takes it to, to Instagram. I'm not trying to do that. I'm not trying to do that. No market stats, not every week, Robert. It's going to be once a month. Week one will be market stats. What do I do for a deal of the month? I'm going to pick out a great listing, whether it's mine, whether it's uh, somebody else's. And I'm going to put it right here. All right, showcase the listing as the picture here. Talk about it here. Real simple. You know, jazz this up. Make it look great. And then the news of the month. This is going to be breaking news of the month. This could be a festival happening. This could be a new development happening. This could be they're building a bridge somewhere. This could be, um, you know, a huge commercial deal went down. Um, breaking news. Okay, breaking news in your local market. Okay, keep it local. People want to fill that locality in these in these emails. Try to steer away from national news, national housing stats, national uh, general stuff, and definitely stay away from like, um, you know, the real general real estate stuff like. You know, uh, how to, you know, win a multiple offers, you know, when the best time to buy is those really like generic stuff. People are not going to ever open your email ever again when you do that. Okay. Where are we at on time? Oh, 258. All right. Right at top of the hour. All right. I crushed that, didn't I? All right. Let me get up out of there. Let me get right here. Um I'd love I'd love for the Q&A if you guys would just put your hand up on Zoom and unmute. That'd be really cool just to uh talk it out. So why not use Gmail? It's free because Gmail only lets you send, I think, 50 emails per hour or 50, 50 per email. So you can only put 50 people per email and you can do that like five times an hour. So you got to send, if you have like 100, you got to do two emails. If you have 1,000, you got to do 10 emails. You got to spread that out over the course of a couple hours. And Gmail may even shut you down for doing it that way. With constant contact, you can literally go boop, boop, and send out, like mine goes to 19,000 people, one click. So maybe that makes sense, Jack. Go ahead, Bill. Oh, and before you go, Bill, I, I work in two cities. All right, so so let me let me address this really quickly. People that have a bunch of different areas. Look at my email here. Okay. See here at the bottom, everything for sale. So I work different areas too. Gulf Shores, condos, Orange Beach, Perdido Key, Gulf Shores, uh, Orange Beach, Ono, Ono Island. So like if you work different counties, you could say Briar County, Green County, you know, uh, Bay Area, whatever. And these links will go to different pages on your website that are dedicated to those areas or whatever you want to show them, whatever whatever information you want them to have concerning those areas can all be right here in a little box, okay? So, so this makes it scalable because now you can send the same email to every single person. 
And depend, it doesn't matter what market they're in because you've got them covered right here in this little space here in the email, if that makes sense. Go ahead, Bill. Okay, uh, so with the featured listing or the closing, you know, if you're going to do that, if you are if you don't use your own, do you use, this is, I guess, a two-part question. One, do you use fellow EXP agents? And two, if whether you do or not, do you call, give them a ring that day and say, hey, I'm going to use your listing or I'm going to use your closing, just give them a heads up or, or no? I mean, I, I don't. Okay. I'm trying to sell their listing so they can make some money. Yeah. No, I understand that. I've, I've, I used to do that in my emails um, a little while back, and my broker at the time told me, which was a different one than I'm at now, they said, you need to call them and ask them for permission. And I thought the same thing. I'm like, I'm trying to help them sell it. I don't know why I would have to, but just want to check, man. I appreciate it. Robert. Hey, Ricky. Uh, I think I already asked this question, but anyway, I got two questions. One is... Uh, the market stats. So you said market stats only the first of the month, not every single week. Yep. And then the rest of it, obviously, will be if they want to look at new listing, that, that's already in there anyway, right? That's already in there in every the, week. The Got it. So there'll be the headline. I'll be like, new restaurant this week, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Or property of the week, whatever. Okay. And then that first, okay, got it. Okay. And then my second question is for follow-up. I mean, I know you're not just using this for follow-up, obviously. You got to be using something else like um, maybe like Gold Bar or some, which I'm thinking about joining Gold Bar. Um, but what are you using yourself to follow up with people besides this? Right yeah. here. There you go. There you go. All right. <laughs> All right. Legal pad. Got it. I just write them down on this sheet of paper that's right in front of me, and then I'm looking at them until they buy something. Got it. Makes sense, bro. Is it Linda? It's Marco Saldana. It's my it's my wife's name. I don't know why, but that's um, what I figured. How you doing? I'm doing good, thank you. Um, I'll be quick. So I've been talking to a lot of people through uh, Red X. Um, a lot of people say that I don't have an email because somehow they don't want to give it out. So I grab their phone numbers. Is there any way we can scale anything like this uh, via text with the, just a cell phone number? Um, not for me. Um, you know, if, you know, you, you can try to figure out how to make that happen. If you don't have their email, it's kind of hard. I mean, it's kind of hard for me to consult you with that in today's world where there's so many texting platforms, right? Um, but I'm just answering for me personally, like I don't really have time to deal with people who don't want to deal with me. You know what I mean? That don't want to give me their email and, you know, don't want to, uh, you know, don't, don't want to communicate with me. I mean, what am, what am I trying to do there? You know what I'm saying? Awesome. Man. Okay. Hey Ricky, Understood. can I share, can I share how I handle some of those with the text messages real quick? Now, now one thing I would do though, is it Marco? Yes, Marco over here in San Antonio. So one thing I would do is with um with Red X, you got their email. Right? So when I'm calling them and I'm talking to them and they've said it's okay to stay in touch, I've got their email right there. Put them on your weekly email. Go ahead, Israel. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, I was going to say I use a, a just any any texting platform will protect you. They'll use their own texting number. The problem is it's a little disjointed, right? Because it's not going to be your cell phone number because otherwise you may be flagged as spam. But anyway, there's like um, uh, different texting systems. I can't remember even which, which one I use, but constant contact when you do your, your weekly email, it's going to give you a link in the campaign. So if you go back to the completed campaign after it's sent out, there's a little link that it gives you and you can copy paste that link. And that's all I do is just what Ricky does is weekly market update and drop the link in there and you're done. So, and it goes so, out via text. So when you go to all campaigns right here, any of these campaigns that have sent, 
Uh, this was the one I sent yesterday. I go here. Number one, I can see everything. I can see how many clicks I had on links. I can see how many opens I had. I can even click there and see all the people specifically that opened the email right there. Now, if I scroll down even further, I've got more data. I can see the unsubscribes. I can click there and see who they were. I've got spam reports. I've got didn't opens. I click, I, I go even further. Now, here are all the links that I put on the email yesterday. I literally can see how many people, and not only how many people, but who they were. I can just click on that number right there and see all 224 people who clicked on that link. If I wanted to market to these people in some kind of form or fashion based on what they clicked on. So that's what's really cool. And this is just from going here, all reports, scrolling down to whatever email you're wanting to look at the details of, and just clicking on whatever you called it. And then it shows you everything. Now, what's cool is when you click this word details here, and you switch over to, to this, this is where you get the link Israel's talking about right here. Now I can copy this. I can copy this link. And now I got it and I could do whatever with it. But let's see where the link goes. Okay. Anybody that clicks on that link, boom, it goes to a, a page, a web page that is your email. That's really cool. So you can text that link, is what Israel's saying. You can text that link to the people that each have their number if you want to do that. What's really cool about this is that it has this join our email list right here. So if you text it out, you they don't you don't have their email, they're not getting it, but they get it via text and they look at it and like, oh, I love this. This is awesome. Heck yeah, I want to join the email list. Bam, they join right there. Right? And they can also share it via Facebook or Twitter. And it's all it's all right there. So that's really cool. So that's what Israel's talking about. Is it Isaiah? Isaiah, that's right. Hey Ricky. What up, bro? Hey, how you doing, man? Um, thanks for your time. Uh, I wanted to ask a question that kind of dived a little deeper into something you already addressed. For folks who have uh, kind of two areas that they are working, I know you mentioned to add the hyperlinks at the end of the email that yep. kind of touch on sales, but that implies that the body of the email is really only addressing one of the markets, right? Doesn't so doesn't matter. So if you're if so you think it's still relevant to folks to receive an email about a county that they're not really like interested in as long as it absolutely has absolutely when you do your market stats within the within those brackets make a table right you can make a table so uh like for example when you're when you're here let's say right and you you know you're on the stats one um uh like you could do you could there's a couple of different things you can do here right uh like uh let's just use this one for example um you could you could do like prices and you could have one county on one side one county on the other right um you could do a little headline you know for the whole thing right there you know, make it whatever prices in wherever, right? You know, center it up, make it big, and then do like a split thing. You know, like you you can do it a lot of different ways, but here's the punchline. Okay, one email to everybody because when you right. start trying to do two emails for two different groups, it kind of defeats the purpose of scalability, yeah. and we're creating a whole new job for ourselves. What we want to do is eliminate jobs for ourselves. where one day we wake up, we built the database so big that all we do is we just send one email out a week and we'd get two deals, an email a week, two deals a week, email a week, two deals a week, right? That That's where we want to be. Okay. That's great. And then the last question I have for you, which is unrelated to that, um, if you were to use constant contact to get emails of the folks in the like specific zip code that you're working and let's just say you haven't met them do you think it's inappropriate to send people add people to the list that you haven't met yet no okay just do it in very small batches okay 
don't don't upload thousands at a time right if you want to do something like that put in just a few at a time cool thanks and as far as i saw something in the comments i don't know what the comment was um but it triggered something for me about unsubscribes if you're not doing your email if you're not doing it because you're worried about people that don't want to see it or might unsubscribe or whatever, you're literally catering to people who don't want to don't want to do business with you. Why are you catering to people that don't want to do business with you? Versus if you if they're the people that are in your database that want to see you consistently, that want to see your content, that want to do business with you, you're you're not you're not catering to them by not doing the email. You're catering to the people that don't want to do business with you. Why? Let's cater to the people that want to do business with us, guys. There's people in our database that want to see your face every week. Those are the people that we want to do business with and let the other people unsubscribe. Let them unsubscribe. Your job is to filter through the population and find that 20 to 30% of people who want to do business with you. Go ahead, Robert. Yes. Um, the question that I have for you is in, the, in your email at the very bottom on the left-hand side, I see a link with different uh, cities or, or counties and so forth. And I just don't know how to get that link where it gives you the whole county. My MLS only allows me to put 50 people per link or 50 properties per link. There, there, there you go, right there. Yeah. I don't do know how to a, get that link to give me the whole. Do you have a website? Yes, I do. Okay. Why not make a page on your website that has the information that they want and then put that link in there? Okay. Got it. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. I mean, and here and here's another one, right? If that's a problem, don't do it at all. Okay. Yeah, I I, I noticed that people like to go into the links into the properties and they'll, and they'll just they'll just keep on scrolling and looking at properties. So, uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm trying to follow your method of giving them you know the links for to see what's active, what's out there. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, but but okay, so so create the link and have it go to my webpage and have the link there and have all those properties there. Yeah. All, Got it. All, Thank all, you. Uh, all, all, listen, all these links right here go to my website. They don't go to MLS. This goes to oh. my web this goes to my website. All these links go to my website. Every link on Got my email it. goes. To, okay. Every link on the it, this is this is where that link goes. Gulf Shores condos for sale. And boom, here's all the condos in Gulf Shores. You click on any of these buildings and it shows you what's for sale in the building. Cool. But right? but when you're on your webpage and you have that link, you must have gotten that from the MLS because the ML, uh, so what 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 am I asking the MLS to give me access to? So when I can put it on my webpage. Whatever you want them to know. But I, I wouldn't even do anything from my MLS. If your custom website isn't set up like mine where you can where you have IDX and you can actually create these links to the different condos, bro, listen right. to me. I don't get this from MLS. Uh, like if people go here and they click on any of these, I'm just trying to think of one that might have something for sale. When you click on, say, Phoenix All Suites West, you click on it and it goes to right. what's for sale in there on my website. This doesn't Got go it. to anything. Okay, so ML basically what I'm missing is the IDX on my webpage. Could be. Got it. All right. Could be. Got it. All right, man. Thank you. Um, I saw a question about texting people the market stats once a month who unsubscribe from weekly emails. Why would you contact someone that unsubscribed from your email? Okay. Lauren. Hi, Ricky. Hey. I'm glad to catch you live. I'm How actually, I'm actually a nice guy, um, guys. I agree. So that I, I have kind of two things. First of all, I wanted you to talk more about, like you're saying, um, your philosophy is pretty much there's people in your marketplace that won't do business with you all, at all, and there's people in your marketplace that will only do business with you. I've heard you say that before. Can you yeah. talk about that a little bit, as especially as it relates to your approach? And how, I think it's real generous. I don't have a lot of those giveaways because I just don't have that abundant approach that you have and the family feeling approach that you take with, with your prospecting and your follow-up. What's your approach? Is that's, it? Because, I mean, that's kind of why I do. 
Well, I think I get caught up in my personality more in the data and I, like my database is huge over the years from looking at different, uh, you know, circle prospecting is what you call it now. I just used to do a lot of just listed, just sold. And I got away from the business, but I still have a huge database. Mm. And sometimes, you know, I've lost touch with people. And so when I go back to talk to them, I find I'm a little more interested in their property than them. Uh -huh. Whereas, you know, it's, and now, you know, like trying to use your script more and taking more of an approach of what in the world I can do for you mm -hmm. kind of thing, which, you know, for me, it's not a new concept because I've been following you for a while now, but um, it's not my natural, my natural yeah. personality. I understand. Um, well, it wasn't mine either, really. Um, in the very beginning, it was like, I want to help first time home buyers. And then the market exploded and everything was just about money, money, money. And then when everything crashed, I lost everything. And then I looked back and I was like, man, I didn't create any relationships with my clients. And that's why I lost everything. The name of the game is um, accumulating relationships with the most people in the market. How can I do that? Boom, weekly email. But it's more than the email. Email is just on the back end that makes sure they never forget you. On the front end, it's making a great first impression um, and it took me a while to kind of learn that. And, um, for you, you know, you say it's hard for you to do that or whatever, and you're more focused on the property than the person. Um, you'll get to a point where you're tired of not selling stuff and you'll start focusing more on the person. I mean, that's all I can say. You'll get to the point where you're tired of being average and you'll realize that it's about people, not the deal. And you'll start focusing on the, the person more. You know, that's just something you're going to have to do because, you know, you're sitting here on the Zoom telling us that, you know, that's how you're supposed to be, you know, so, you know, that's how you're supposed to be. Now it's just a matter of you actually following through and executing on that. So, yeah, and it yep. seems like with that approach, you just get people that are going to be easy to work with. The, with all, with my approach, it feels like you're going to get people that yeah, are easy to work with. It's like you're building that relationship. If you're more interested in the relationship than the deal. I mean, I mean, it, like so, you should be teaching the class. You know what I mean? Like you're saying every, all the right things. Right. Well, well, and I appreciate that. Um, that's why I wanted, I like to get the reinforcement. I, that's why I listen to you. Cause I always yeah. like to hear those things that you say, but mm -hmm. um, also I guess just going beyond that, I was going to ask, are you going to do this for your website as well? Cause this is really helpful with the weekly email and if it would be really cool to get a zoom like this for setting up your website. Cause I think you do that too. Don't you? Um, I don't do the website and stuff. I add the, uh, close sales on there every month or two. Um, but I don't, I don't do the website. So, um, you just need to have an IDX website. You know what I mean? And then kind of create the links and stuff. If you yeah. can't do it, just hire okay. somebody to do it. Like I hired someone to do the web, my website. You know what I mean? Like I didn't do it. Okay, cool. And you know, and you know what, guys? Well, thank you so much for everything you do. And I'm glad. Have it. I'm glad I caught you here live. It's good to see you. No, absolutely. Good to see you. Um, you know what, too, that I've been thinking a lot about lately, guys is uh <laughs> my facial expressions um what what i've been thinking a lot about lately is how few leads i actually get from my idx website how a lot of people uh you know go there look at properties but like it seems like i never get leads uh from the website and stuff you know i'm like really pondering that whole situation just so you know cricket Thank you. I appreciate yep. you um, calling on me. Uh, so one of the questions you just answered was the website was um, you paid to have it created. It's not like KB core. It's number one, correct? My what? The website or email? Your website. Yeah. Your web KB core. It can be, I, it can be KB I, core, right? Okay. It can be KB core. Um, it just, it would take a lot of work to get the KB core 
I mean, like a custom website like I have is a lot of work too. Either way it goes, it's going to be a lot of work to like create pages, create links, kind of get it how you want it to where it's, you know, user friendly and people can get where they want to go and stuff like that. Okay. All right. The other thing is I just looked up the constant contact. Uh, what uh, level subscription do you get the, um, the, the templates and the, the ability to do, to utilize? Is it, is it the, which, which of the levels? Um, I would get like the middle tier or even the higher tier. Okay. Um, but you, you, there, you're going to have access to it on for any level. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then the last question, so I'm monopolizing you. Uh, the last question was to create links. I'm, I'm not very tech savvy. How do I create links like of new listings available and things that have sold and things like that? Where is any What's suggestion? Your What's your MLS? Is it Paragon? Is it Matrix? Yeah. What is it? Paragon. 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 All right. It's real easy. You just go to your MLS. All right. You just go there. All right. Let's say well, I'm just going to just hit new listings right here. I would, if I were doing this, I would you know, segregate a little more. This is going to be rentals and land and everything. But let's just say I want to, that I want to send this list of new listings. I just check all of them and then I click this email box. Right. Okay. Okay. Click the email Makes box, sense. click the email box. And I'm going to click hyperlink. I want to make a link. So I'm going to click hyperlink. Then I okay. want to make sure I have all the listings I've selected. Then I click how I want them to see the, the, there's a bunch of different ways here. I'm going to do MLS client view. Then I add that here, make sure the box is checked. Then I'm going to compose email. It creates this. Then I click on, click here to view listings. And I click on this figure eight. Boom, I have a link right here. Okay. Copy okay. this link. I can go to the link. So when people click on that link, this is what they're going to see. And okay. they can click on any of these listings and look at the details of these listings, right? So I went through that quick, but you can go back and watch the replay of this. Oh, no. you know, or yeah, whatever. I, I get well, and so one other thing is I remember in one of our meetings, which is the stupidest thing, they said, oh, if you're marketing a property, if you're sending out, uh, it, it only can be EXP listings. And I'm like, well, but if I've got somebody on an MLS search, it's not just. Okay. Listen, off the record. Okay, guys, off the record. I don't follow rules if you guys haven't realized <laughs> that yet. Okay. Yeah, I, I call people I'm not supposed to, and I email properties I'm not supposed to all the time. Off the record, I didn't say that. Okay, um, I just don't care. Well, it doesn't make sense anyway to to me if I can if I can if somebody says yes, I want to buy a three bedroom two bath house in Greenville, Tennessee, what Greenville, South saying, Carolina. What they're saying is that you're sending it to a specific person that asked for it versus blasting it. Okay, there's a difference. Okay, you understand? Okay, okay. Um. But I can just revert back to my motto for my entire life is that I don't give a, you know what, forever. I don't care okay. how hard it is. I don't care what people say. I don't care what you tell me I'm not going to do something. I'm going to do it and I'm going to win. So, you know, don't call these people. You're going to get fined. All right. You know, you're going to stop me from trying to help people. And then you're going to find me for doing my job. Um. Yeah. Just never made any sense. But uh, yeah, I mean, if you get in trouble, then don't do any more. You know, I don't yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. Carol. Carol, Carl. Hey, Ricky. How you doing? What up, dude? Hey, man. Uh, yeah. So um, since your last course, I've uh, been collecting about five emails a day. Um, mm -hmm. you know, doing, uh, geo farming. So, you know, appreciate that. Just the, the mindset change in the scripts has really, you know, changed the, changed it for me. It's a game changer. Change the game, bro. What can I do for you? Yeah. So, um, I was wondering some, I think someone asked it earlier, you, you don't send out, like, if you have a hot lead, like the ones that are on your hot sheet there, do you have a separate, um, email that you're sending out to any of those people or is it all just the same newsletter? Same newsletter. Okay. Scalable, okay. simple systems. Okay. 
If somebody's uh, hot, then I have them on a list, on a notebook, piece of paper, and, and I'm looking down at them, and I know where we are in the process, and I'm following up accordingly one-on-one. Okay, you're reaching out just directly then. Okay, got it. Um, and you said something too about the subject line in the, the emails. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you like? I mean, I'm assuming in constant contact, there's like, there's templates and everything in there, but do you have like, what's the most common thing? Like, what do you normally say in those to like hook people in? I don't hook people with the subject. Okay. Do you understand? You yeah. miss, you miss the first part. No, no, I, I was here. I mean, I know you hooked them with the content, but like to... to no, get no, 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 no. I hooked them with the pre-header text. Do you understand that? Okay, okay. yeah. Do you, do you get that? It's okay if you don't, I can show you. Yeah, could you show me again real quick? Right here. Right here. When I just click anywhere in this space, okay? Mm -hmm. When I click there, this box pops up. At the top of this box, it shows me exactly what it's going to look like okay. in their inbox. Okay, I got you. Got it? Yeah, I see. Now, it. now, now, this is going to be who it's from. Okay. Okay. This is going to be the subject. The subject's going to be bold. You see, it's right there, bold. That's the subject. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want the subject to be the same every time, and I want that date to show them this is fresh information. Okay. Now, the preheader text, you see, it's not bold. It's right here after the subject. When mm -hmm. they click on the email to open the email, this preheader text disappears. They only see this in their inbox. Okay. This is designed to hook them in to get them to open the email. You can see the preheader text I used this week, a couple of days ago, was C941 condos slash 770 homes sold 2023. Literally gave them the entire list. Okay, that was my pre-header text. That was the thing to try to get them to open the email. That wasn't the greatest in the world. I wasn't the most, you know, I don't I don't expect a lot of stuff from that, but like that's what I that's what I used this week. Okay? okay. So I'm branding the subject and then I'm using a I I'd love to do like 3 to 5 words here to try to hook them. This is what I'm going to use right here to get them to open it. Not the subject. The subject I want to brand it where when they see it, they know it, and they're not deleting it. Versus if I try to use a preheader text, whatever, if I try to use the hook that I use in the preheader text as the subject, that when it's when the subject's different every week, that could be disguised as spam. Okay. But when they see the same subject from the same person every week, they're like, oh. And then it's like, see 941 condos are sold? Heck yeah, let me open that. Or new restaurant in Orange Beach. Or, okay. you know, condo prices down 20, you know, two percent whatever the hook's gonna be you got me yeah i got you what else um i think that is it oh well, do you well i was just curious do you notice like a lot more click through um on the weeks you do the giveaways you have a lot I more don't, like people no i don't look at it oh okay i don't look at open i don't look at open rates i don't look when i was building my business i never looked at open rates uh unsubscribes click throughs Who's doing what? Never looked at it one single time. Okay. I don't care. I got it. When they email gotcha. me back, then I email <laughs> them back, right? They yep. call me because they want to buy a property. People are like, don't, uh, you know, don't send them closed deals, you know, make them, make them have to call you for that. I'm like, why don't want them to call me for closed deals? I want them to call me when they're ready to buy or sell something. You know what I'm saying? Call me when yeah. you're ready to buy or sell. Here's all the information for free. Call me when okay. you're ready to go. Don't call me to ask me to look something up for you. I could just have sent you already freely on my website. Got it. Perfect. Thank you, Ricky. Jay. Hey, how's it going, my man? What up, dude? Not much, brother. Um, quick question. When I was going through the um, constant contact, the, the tiers, I know you had mentioned mid to high. Um, I kind of just want to see do you, if you're using these features. I was reading through them. Uh, some are like social media ads, Google ads, uh, SEO recommendations and things I like would. that. I would. 
I would use the uh, social media stuff. It connects to your Facebook and you can like run an ad, you know, of the email. I think it's brilliant. So is that, I'm going to assume that it gives you access to be able to do that, but you have to pay for the ad itself. Of right? course. Is that, is that what it is? Of course okay. you have to pay for the ads. Yeah. Run it for $2 you... a day, you know, $2 a day in your area or whatever. You know, the more exposure you can get to that email, getting people into your ecosystem, the better. So, so what does it, what does it do? It just puts out an ad of the email. Like, have you? Used you can it customize it, bro. You can customize the ad. Okay. Yeah, but it's going to be a link, like the link that we, uh, that we that I showed you, right? They're going to be able to click and go to your newsletter, join your email list, see all your stuff, right? I understand what you're saying. It's genius, bro. Thanks, man. Yeah, bro. Robert. Yeah, so I signed up with uh, Cast of Contact with your affiliate a while ago. We're just sending you an email to get these templates because I have different templates that. You can send me an email. You should have the templates, though. They should be there under your company. If you go to your um, so were you here from the beginning of the um? I know I was having some connection issues. I couldn't. Okay, couldn't. so check this. Check this out. So when you go to create an email like this, you see this. Yep. Okay, so you'll hit create right there, and then you'll hit email. You want to create an email. Okay, then you'll then you'll then at the template you'll see your organization name at the top. Do you see that? Yeah. Can you so? I was just getting on the constant contact here. So create email. Yep. <clears throat> and then uh, yeah, I don't have I don't have the I got just it's like a generic and I did sign up under with your affiliate. Okay. Can you email me? Yep, I'll do that. I'll do that. Yeah, just email me. And, right. uh, and then, <clears throat> go ahead. So, and then when I do like send out the emails, I'm getting this yellow banner on the top. You're getting a yellow ban. Yeah. It's a, it's like a warning. Be careful this with this message. It's maybe a smooth spoofed message. Like they're like, when you send the email out, they're getting your, the people you're sending so it to. Well, now that I'm reading it, um, this message claims they've been sent from your account. So it might be just on my test emails that that's what I'm seeing then. What do so you, everybody else isn't seeing that. What are you seeing on your testing? Is it my template? No, it's a, it's like a warning, but now that I'm looking at it, um, because it's connected to my email, I'm thinking it may be a warning from Google. Yeah. Exactly. Stating that it's it's a it's an email sent from my account, but it came from somewhere else. So uh that's maybe what it is then. It is, dude. It's 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 that so that's not do. what everybody's seeing then. Because it's like a yellow banner that goes across the top of the email. Yeah. That's Google. Okay. That's the Google. Okay, so not that's not what everybody else is seeing then. So it's not popping up as a spam warning. Okay. Unless unless Google's doing it to them too, right? Or who or whatever their email server is. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fair enough. I appreciate it. Appreciate cool, everything bro. you do. Yeah, man. Let's see who we got. I or Rebecca. Hey there. Thank you very much for taking this. Mm -hmm. I think I know the answer to this question is um what are your thoughts on requiring registration in your emails or and or your website? Uh, what's what's the question? I'm not understanding it. Requiring registration when somebody comes to your website and requiring them to register to get in. I don't require anybody to register for anything. Yeah, that's what I thought. I was wondering. Thank you. Somebody wants to go to my website and look at stuff. Look at stuff. I don't it's free. Yeah, I'm not trying to get you to do anything if you want to i have a link where you can sign up for my weekly email on my website okay. if you want to freely sign up for it okay so it there's no registration requirements for email address or cell phone number or anything like that that's fantastic thank you not not for me not on my stuff i 
Like I had that, like my one, like I've had websites to do that. And I call the web designer immediately. I'm like, take that shit off of my website. Right. I don't want anybody to have to do anything to see what they want to see. Right. Got it. Yeah. Isaiah. Yeah. <clears throat> First of all, I just want to say thank you, Ricky. I appreciate what you're doing here. You're providing a lot of value. And um, I was referred to you by a great agent down here in Sarasota. So I just want to say thanks you. Thank you so much. We're gonna I I'm mean, gonna be in Sarasota in just a few weeks. Okay. Nice. I'm gonna be um, there um speaking at the board of realtors. So make sure you get a um did you know that? I didn't know. Is what week is this? It's uh I think it's October, I mean, uh, September 22nd, Let's see. But you need to get with them and get a ticket. Okay. Yeah, shoot. Well, yeah. It's like September 21st or something like that. But anyway, get with them and get a ticket and come out. Awesome. Yeah, why? Well, and I uh, I appreciate your, your value that you've added. And like I said, so Marlon Yoder was a realtor that referred me to you. And I'm glad I took up his advice to... Uh, to learn from you. And I'm now in my week three of doing the weekly email and mm -hmm. uh, I've already had some pretty good engagement with it. Um, no new clients yet from it, but um, just been blessed with the, uh, with the feedback and the value you've given. So I just want to say thank you. Oh, absolutely, man. Glad it's working for you. Yep. Appreciate it. Cynthia. You there, Cynthia? Can you hear me? I can. Oh, so, um, I love. Oh, hold on, hold on. Something's going on. Something's going on. Something's going on. Am I? Are we getting feedback? I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and go to someone else until I figure out. Okay. Rhett. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi. Uh, I was just uh, wanted to find out. So I've been sending out your weekly email for a while now. Uh, I've gotten some response, which is good. But uh, just um, going back to your uh, subject heading, um, not the pre-header, but, uh, but the subject line. Um, so I put in Rhett's Weekly Housing Info and I put the date. Do you think that's good or should I switch it over to like the, the um, actual market area? Say again, what subject are you using? I, I put in my name. I put Rhett's Weekly Housing Info. That's good. It doesn't matter what it is, right? As long as it's being branded, which means you do it over and over. People recognize it, that that's Rhett's email, right? Um, no, I think that's fine. Okay. All mm -hmm. right. I've actually uh, finally got some response. I've been doing it for a couple of years now and, uh, you know, it's mostly circle prospecting. Uh, so I'm finally getting some response from it. I've actually got a listing that I'm putting on next week from it. Uh, it's my first one uh, from my circle prospecting, but uh, it's finally starting to kick in. So I'm glad about that. Thank Hell you very yeah. much. For Hell yeah. Thanks. Good, good yeah, job. Thanks man. Very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's finally, you know, you just got to stick with it is really the key. You know, it's uh, like you always say, putting in the grind, it seems like. Yeah. No, it's it's what it is, man. Like, you just keep doing what you do and good things happen. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much for everything that you do. That's all I had. Cool, bro. Andrew Fox. Hey, Ricky. Hey there. So. Other than gathering emails um, organically, do you have any suggestions on how I could um, purchase emails for zip codes or certain areas? Um, you can use Red X Geo Leads and Expireds Plus. You have to use uh, Geo Leads Plus on Red X. Just go to redxdiscount.com and get uh, Geo Leads Plus, and then you can actually pick out which owners. You can get 7500 a month. Just go to redxdiscount.com and get GeoLeads Plus, and then boom, you get all their emails. Great. Thank you. Robert, are you oh. still there? You have another question? Yeah, I just have a real quick question. I understand it's probably a redundant question, but about the, the counties that they hit. 
areas, you know, like I'm in a, you know, Detroit MSA, you know, would it be instead of just putting one county, would you put in Detroit, MSA, you know, Detroit metropolitan area? Or does it does it really matter? I guess I'm not understanding the question, really. Like for your like because you have yours as, you know, Gulf Shore, uh -huh. you know, your subject line or whatever, your market update for Gulf Shore. Or I, like Rhett does, you know, just put, you know, real estate with Rhett or real estate with Rob instead of having, because, you know, I covered three, well, three to four. Uh, you can name it you know, whatever columns. you want to. Okay. You're talking about for the subject? Yeah. yeah. Be whatever you wanted to name it. I mean, okay. just, okay. just brand just it, brand you it know, yourself. just pick something and stick with it. That way people okay. know that's Robert's report and it's going to okay. be good. Right, right, right. And, mm -hmm. and I know and this is just kind of an add on. Everybody was concerned about uh unsubscribes and and you know clicks i actually when i first started sending out your emails and it was a very genetic email that i before i you know started you know want to use your templates it was just off of like keep current matters and it was their email builder that i uploaded right so it was very generic and I like very your, generic your, very you know losing that's class, why I like and right. because it's personalized yeah. you know yeah and uh but i but i had unsubscribers and they're actually good buddies of mine that still do business with me you know and so worrying about unsubscribes they just hey i want to i don't want your email right. i already know how to get a hold of you because Great. it was a generic email and it was let them call i mean that's one thing they might have those people might have unsubscribed from a great email too who cares yeah why are we going no, to cater to people it, it's not really to be a concern you know um, what? because they're, they're, they call me no matter what if they got a house they're going to send me referrals they just keep a real tight email box and so Worrying about unsubscribes is kind of a non a non issue, you know, because um, yep. I know that's what yep. people's questions were. Where should I pay attention to unsubscribes or whatever? But uh, that, I guess that's just kind of a caveat. Um, but yeah, no, I that's why because I was doing an email builder from mm -hmm. you know Keep Current Matters. Yeah, that's why I'm really wanting to get your your templates, you know. So yeah, because they're personal. dive in there, bro. And I just want to ask another question to see if I get another expression out here. <laughs> Thank you'll you. see. You'll see some more, Lenore. You there, Lenore? Okay, Carla. Okay, yes. Uh, hi, go. I have a question. So my business is a lot open houses. Um, and I just don't know, like I, after the open house, I call them, them and then I send them an email, but it's so hard for me to convert them. Even though when I have conversations with them or not like in the open house, they're like, oh yeah, let's stay in touch. We uh -huh. want to list our home or whatever. Uh -huh. But I'm like, I don't know how to get like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong because mm -hmm. if they are so engaged with me at the open house, yep. why is it that they won't answer my emails or won't answer my phone calls? Um, so when so you're at the open, let, make it better. Okay. When we're at the open house, just think about one of the, can, can you think of one of the scenarios in your mind? Um, yeah. So like, okay. I, no, I no, mean, no, 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 no. Just, can you think of it? Not, not talk about it, but just, can you, do you have it in your mind, This one of the scenarios? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you talk to them and they said they wanted to sell their house, why do they want to sell their house? Because they were wanting to downsize. Okay. Okay. Did you talk about that? Why they wanted to downsize? Well, the kids left. So in this specific situation, they were just empty nesters and they wanted to downsize. Okay. Okay. Did you ask them if they were already working with an agent on that? They said they had um, they had had uh, agents approach them about selling their home, but they were not committed to anybody specifically. Okay. And then what was the time frame of them making this move? They did not really say whether or not they wanted to do it immediately. Did you, did you ask them what their time frame was? Honestly, I didn't. Okay, this is this is okay. We're we're gonna get to the place. I was gonna keep digging here till I found out where you dropped off. See, mm -hmm. and, and it's like it's like you, it, you know, just yeah. think about it. They wanna they wanna sell. All right, you had this conversation with them. They don't really have an agent, but you left the conversation, and I'll find out how you left it in a second. But just think about this for a second. 
You don't even know when they want to do this. So how can we really help them? How do we really know what the next step is? The first thing is, is why do you want to sell it? Right. The next thing is, are you already working with an agent? Right. Mm -hmm. and, and when we ask them why we're going to dig, because it's like, oh, our kids left or, or um, we, we want to downsize. Well, you got to keep digging there. Okay. You want to downsize? Why? Well, the kids left. Oh, where'd the kids go? You kind of bring it back to their life. What's going on in their life? What's going on in their world? And then it's like, okay, well, how, how quick are you looking at? Are you, are you working with another agent? No, we've talked to some. We don't really have anybody in mind. Great. What's the time frame? What are you guys looking to do this quickly? Are you looking to enjoy the house for another year? We don't even know that because we didn't ask. Now, how did we leave the conversation? Right. Where, where, you know, what was going to be the next step? Uh, me, they were like, uh, I said to them, I was like, I'm going to stay in touch with you. I'm going to send you other options here in, in the community that I was doing the open house because they didn't particularly like the house that I was doing an open house at. I said, there is plenty of other choices for you. I would love to show you. I assume when they were already in the open house stage that they were immediately thinking about selling. So I assume that the time frame was really short. You know what assume does? Yes. <laughs> what? It makes an ass out of you and me. <laughs> yes. All right. You never assume anything. They yeah. people look people look at houses literally a year or two before they buy all the time. And so and so what it does and I'm I'm not picking on you. I'm sure yeah. you're an I believe you're an amazing agent because I hear the sound I of your love voice. It. No, I hear I, I hear I hear I hear the sound of your voice and I think man she really cares about people. She's a great agent. But the problem is you haven't been trained to dig mm -hmm. deep enough to 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 dissect the entire situation to identify what the next step really is. You assume, see right there, when you assume what they're trying to do and then you base the next step on what you assume, then we're lost because then if they if they're if your assumption doesn't line up with their reality and then you took the next step based on what you assumed, where you assume they were, they're like, "What the hell's going on here?" Right? Mm -hmm. And so what I'm saying is, is if you would have dug a little deeper uh, about when they want to do it, how they want to do it, blah, 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 blah. And then, because we still don't know when they want to do it. And here you are sending them properties. Well, sending them properties may not even be what, like, it's like, okay, we can dig deeper here. It's like, do you have to, do you want to sell first and then buy? Right. Do you have to sit? Can you buy and then sell? Some people have to sell their current house before they can buy the next one. Some people don't. Some people plan like we, we planned and we just bought the next house and then moved out of it where it wasn't this like last second, like two window time crunch to move into the next house. We wanted to take our time. So we moved into the next house. We closed on it, moved into it. Then we took our time moving everything. Then we cleaned it all up. Then we got it looking great. Then we put it on the market. Then we sold it. We were in position to buy first, then sell. Not everybody's in that position. We don't know any of this about these prospects, right? Okay. About these specific prospects. So the problem is, is it Lenore? Yes. The, pro mm -hmm. the problem is that you're not digging deep enough into what these clients are trying to do, what they want to do, when they want to do it. You're assuming what they want to do when they want to do it. And that's where you are losing them. And then they're just like ghosting you because you're taking a step that they're not even ready for. The next step might have been for you to go look at their house, not to send them properties, but I don't know that because I don't I did, know. I did, I did ask them. It's like, I'll be more than happy to go to your house right after my open house. I I'll be. I understand. I understand. I'm making a general point, though. Right? No, you're right. I'm making a general point. You got to dig deeper here and you got to really get to the root of it to get that deep connection about, OK, we're on the same page here. You know, agent to prospect. We're on the same page. And you're le it seems like you're leaving these situations where you're not really on the same page yet. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not really in unison to what's next and, and where we're going from here. And so mm -hmm. that's what you need to tighten up, okay? Do you recommend any training or any book we that just I can did read? It. We just did it. Okay. Just, just dig, dig, continue dig. Continue to dig. do that. Pretend like they're okay. your mom. 
right? If they're your mom and they walked in and they said, we're, you know, Hey, I'm just looking, Hey mom. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about selling. You moved out and I'm thinking about downgrading. What's the next thing you would say? When are you looking to do that? Right. You would keep digging and digging and digging because it's your mm -hmm. mom and you have this mm -hmm. family like relationship. That's the way you need to treat every prospect. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Barry. Ricky, can you hear me? Yo. Hey, man. Thanks for doing this. Sure. Appreciate yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, probably a pretty basic question. And embarrassingly, I've been in the business for a good while and really just never utilized much of my website. So I'd like to hear your thoughts around how critical is this to have a site that you um, connect with the IDX and send people information from your website specifically? Or uh, do you have a recommendation for who to use like one of these one of these sites in a box? I think like uh, Easy Agent Pro or like one of these sites, or do you think it's best practice to go out and find a developer and have them build a thing for you? What um, what do you suggest? I don't know, man, because this is something I've been pondering, as I mentioned earlier, like all the IDX stuff. And I just get mm -hmm. I get like, you know, tens of thousands of impressions a month with zero leads. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I'm just wrapping my head around. Do I need this IDX situation? You know, I'm really pondering it. Um, I still have it personally, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm really kind of at a crossroads. You know, yeah, um, I can see that. So, so you're wondering then if it is just as easy just to grab links out of the MLS and use that instead of a yeah, site. Exactly, exactly. Because, because like, um, it seems like <clears throat> people just want the information. And um, when people search you online, they're not really looking to search properties, they've already looked on Zillow. They're searching mm -hmm. you to find your phone number. Right. They're searching mm -hmm. you to set an appointment. They're searching you to contact you. They're searching to see reviews, not really searching you to look up properties, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. There's a hundred um, and a half portals they can use for all that, huh? Yeah. I'm just, I'm just at a crossroads with it. So I don't know. I'm still pondering that myself. Got it. Uh, the other quick question I had for you is to the, to the value of these sites, when you do use some of these sites to build a search, it seems like they'll continue sending properties for the folks that there is value to that. You can um, do that on uh, you can do that through def, MLS. Well, here's what changed recently with my MLS. You know, people in the, are in these these buying cycles of. I mean, I've had I've worked with people for seven years and then had them buy a million and a half dollar property. My MLS changed it to if they don't log into the site for eighty to ninety days, then they kill that search. So I guess then I could just go back in and rebuild the search, but I, I haven't done that yet, but I think my MLS is still going to prevent me from sending them properties if they haven't logged into the site. Yeah. Have you come across that? I have. Um, and <laughs> I'll be dead honest with you guys. I just sent a weekly email. Mm -hmm. I never really Rely connected anybody to, to get like automatic stuff. I connected a few people to get that, that just was dying for it. But I wasn't like, oh, let me put every single process, every single person in my in my database in sure. there. Um, it was just like if somebody, if it was a specific situation, then boom. And then that's funny because we had Navica, and then in 2010, I believe we or was it 10 or 11 or 12, we switched to Paragon, mm -hmm. and anybody you had a Navica would basically just disappeared, and you had to start all over. Yep. And I'm like, thank God I never did that. Mm -hmm. It goes back to the brokerage CRMs. You put all the people in your brokerage CRM, it's like you don't have any control. They could mm. switch CRM and you got to download, upload, or would you lose it? That's why I like having an outside database outside of what somebody's going to give me for free, mm. you know, to, to use. Got it. Got it. Cool. All right, brother. That's all I had. I appreciate you. Thank you. See you, bro. All right. Let's see. See what I got going on here. Is it Monica? Yes, Ricky. Thank you so much. And Barry took the question right out of my, my mouth. I was going to ask about the website. So, okay. Um, that's that. And so in order to do the links, you recommend MLS, just kind of using it there instead of... I mean, worse, if you don't have an IDX website, yeah. 
Okay, cool. That's what I'll do. And then also my last question was for your organizational name. What was your name? I didn't even I didn't even pick that up. Oh, mine was just your... like zero to diamond or whatever. Oh, so, okay. It was like okay, cool. Your your yours is gonna be whatever you sign up with constant contact. Some people put their brokerage name, some people put their team name, you know, whatever you put when you join mm -hmm. is what uh that's what uh that's what it's going to be. Okay, cool. All right. And thank you again for everything. You are more than welcome. Luba. Yes. Hi, um, Ricky. Thank you so much for all you do for us. Mm -hmm. um, and I really love your um, scripts and, and the way that you are um, approaching other people. It's great. But my question to you is... Um, have you ever thought to be a little bit more aggressive? And the reason I'm asking that is because pre-COVID, I did a lot of door knocking, mostly uh, for the open house. I would invite people to the house. And when I see that conversation close, I would automatically ask them, have you ever thought of selling your own house? I think it's Mike Ferry um, script and that. And it was like bold question. And then they would, and I had great success with that. Mm. But after COVID, I stopped door knocking and I switched to calling and I do use your uh, script and I love it. But my conversion rate basically dropped to 10% with that. And I feel like I am not as aggressive as I used to be because I don't even know how to squeeze that. Are you thinking to sell right now? Why not? So, why don't you combine the two? Why don't you build a relationship with them and then ask them if they want to buy or sell something? Well, I do, but that's not my first question. And many times people just hang up or or if I don't grab them right away, <clears throat> they do not carry on the conversation. Mm -hmm. As to before, I would like, do you have you ever thought of selling? And then they're like a, a deer in the headlights and they like, uh, maybe. Okay, then, maybe. Cool. Do you have an agent that you're going to work with when you decide to actually, you know, when you take that maybe to a yes, would you, do you have an agent you're going to work with? No? It's just. Oh, okay, uh, great. Well, listen, I'm, I'm here. I'm a real estate agent. You know, you don't have anybody. When you decide you might want to do something, I'd love to work with you when that day comes. Well, I'll tell you what, why don't we just stay in touch? Yeah, cool. What's a good email? It makes sense to me for sure, but they mm. don't get it that far ahead in my conversation. They're like, no, not interested. Bye, click. Or maybe well, the that, fact. Okay, here's the thing, Luba. Do you think that it's you or them? <laughs> well, now that you put it that way, I don't know. Maybe it's me. But, but what about me that it's me? Your tone your intentions, how you're coming across, the communication, you're not creating any curiosity. You sound like every other agent. I'm not I'm I'm just saying blanket statements. I haven't heard your calls, right? I'm not saying that any of that's true. I'm just throwing out ideas. But you are throwing off okay. red flags because when I talk to people, they don't hang up. And I'm talking to the same people you're talking to. Right? There's a lot of agents when they make the calls, people aren't hanging up. They're talking to the same people you're talking to. What's the difference? Well, the difference is the communication style, the tone, the speed of voice. Um, so that's what we have to work on. We have to realize that, wait a minute, they didn't answer the phone hoping for a bad situation, right? The fact that they answered Luba tells me that they're looking to have a great conversation with someone. They don't answer the phone. They could just reject the call. But they answered it and they didn't answer it hoping for a negative, uh, a negative situation, right? But it's that fight or flight, right? We got three parts of our brain. We've got the crocodile brain. We've got the, the middle brain. We've got the neural cortex, right? Everybody starts with that crocodile brain like, okay, what's going on here? Is this a threat? And then when that tone or the words that you're saying don't really line up with somebody that's bringing value, 
more somebody that's just trying to sell them something, then they get into that fight or fight mode and they're out. Versus when you when they answer the phone and they hear your voice and they think, who the heck is this? As in, man, this person sounds familiar. Is this my mom, my, my sister, my cousin, my best friend from high school and her from a while? Man, this person sounds familiar. When they get that feeling, then it's like, okay, they're listening. Right? So I guess you need to ask yourself, do I sound like a friend when I'm calling or do I sound like a, a real estate agent? Good question. I don't know how I sound when I'm on the phone. I guess I sound better when I'm in person and the person is answering the door rather than the phone. So go door knock. Why aren't you door knocking then? Why aren't you just door knocking till your knuckles bleed? COVID. <laughs> Can I still blame COVID? COVID is over. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And and furthermore, you could knock, take three steps back, and you're literally outside still three talking to them. Outside still. Yep. You know what I mean? So, like, my thing is, Luba, is if you're telling me, man, I'm great in person, I'm great door knocking, then why aren't you just door knocking? You know what I mean? Let's see. I think you guys lost me. Do you, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Luba, can you hear me? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 I was like, what is going on here? All right. Well, two things, Luba. Door knock to your knuckles bleed. And on the phone, it's not the prospects. Okay. It's, 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 it. I hate to tell you, but it's, it's you. You got you got it. You got to get really good at making people feel comfortable really quickly, and then get really good at making friends with them really fast, right? And it's just a skill that takes time to develop. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Cynthia. Okay, I'm back now. Thank you. Um, so, like, I love how you're all about helping people. Um, and that's me. I'm a helper. I'm a giver. But how do you keep from everyone wanting to be your friend and going to lunch with you? Like, I mean, how many people take you up on your offer? That seriously is like a big concern of mine. Have you ever sent uh, an email out and said, hey, I'll take you to lunch? Uh, no, I haven't. Okay. I, well, I, I have. Okay. Well, I have. And guess yeah. what? Nobody wants to go lunch with you. Trust me. Oh, oh really? <laughs> nice. Yeah. Right. Nobody wants to go to lunch with you, right? And, um, <laughs> the cool thing is, is everybody knows that you're willing to, and that's all that matters, but guess okay. what? Nobody takes you up on it. And if they do, it's like, <laughs> great. We're going to go spend some time with the client. What's wrong with that? It's like worst no, case scenario. I, I go have lunch with the client. No, I love it. Like, you know, and I had called a few people in my, um, that I'd worked with before and I'm like, Hey, let's do lunch. And all three of them said, yeah. And so now I'm like, okay, I got to put them in my calendar. And I Great. love it. I love Let's it. fill our yeah. calendar up. Let's I'm do just, five lunches yeah. a week, Monday through Friday yeah. with clients. Yeah, perfect. Awesome. Yeah, now, and here's the other thing. And my other question is, is um, when you, when people say like, I'm sure, you know, because you are busy, if they say, oh, you know, I know you're busy or, you know, you're kind of, you're, you seem really busy. Um, you know, I, I'm always, yeah, I'm busy. It keeps me out of trouble. I just keep being busy. But how do you counter um, act people thinking that maybe you're too busy for them? Because, I mean, you're going to be busy because you're a, a successful agent, right? What are you too busy? To what are you too busy? What are you too busy to do? Yeah, I don't know. That's what I'm asking should, you. What, should what I ask them that? Huh? Well, I'm not too busy. But that's right. what they assume when they see yeah. I can, I don't care what they assume. Yeah. When they call me, I answer the phone. When well, yeah, they want to yeah. go lunch, we go have lunch. Like, yeah. what am I too busy for? Anything right. you want, we're doing it. You want yeah. to come look at a property? I'm going to show you some houses. You want to go eat lunch? You want to? Yeah. Uh, you know what? Wh what do you What do you think I'm too busy for? I answer the phone every time you call. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. I can't I have, worry, I Cynthia, worry. about what other people are thinking in their mind. I just, yeah. just I don't. can't. I can't. Yeah. 
Cool. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Awesome. Okay. Vic Victoria. Hey, Ricky. Thanks. I just Hi. wanted to uh, revert back to the IDX thing real quick. So if, we're, if we don't have a website with an IDX feed, you just go to the MLS and create your, your link. And then yeah. each week you're going to update that. And so the, the IDX is the benefit to that is that it automatically updates after you've created the link. And so is there, when you go back to create the next link for next week's email, are you capturing all the things that came up that they, that your link didn't capture because it was a fixed link when you made it last Wednesday? For the IDX? No, if you're doing it through MLS. Yeah, through MLS, and, you have to create a new link every week. Right. And so before you had, cause you talked about in your old videos, you talked about how you didn't have a website at first. Yeah. So when you didn't have a website at first, you just sent the email out. You were just creating a fixed link that didn't automatically update and you just renewed it every single uh, week. Exactly. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, I went in MLS. Was... I figured out what, like I would go in there and create a link for like the best deals. I would find like five or six of the best deals. And I would say, click here for what I feel like are the best deals. I handpick these out of, uh, out of 300 properties. And I literally would look through 300 properties and find the best six. And I would, I would get those and I would say, Hey, I handpick these six deals out of 300 properties. Click here to see those six deals. And it was an MLS link that went to the six deals, right? The next oh, link would I be like, like the next link would be like, here's all the new listings, um, you know, in the area. Right. Here's all the foreclosures, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I got really creative with it. And um, yeah, I mean, I, that was part of my routine was going in. So, when, and, so the next week when you went in, you did you did you set the dates to go back to the Thursday after the Wednesday that you created last week's link? Or did you just start fresh each each week? Fresh. I would start fresh and I would okay. go back. I would always go back two weeks. So okay. even though I'm sending out the email every week, I would mm -hmm. always have two weeks worth of the new listings. So even my links now, they go back two weeks worth of uh, okay. new listings. That way, you know, like they, it, it stays on the link for two weeks in case somebody mm -hmm. misses the email or, you know, somebody sees it late or whatever. You know what I mean? Right. That's perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Oh. All right. Well, guys. I have to say, I feel like we've really gotten to know each other for these two hours. Mm. Um, I hope this really helped you. Um, I know it did. And um totally. Thank you, Ricky. You're the best. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And um, okay, Randy, you say answer my question, please. What's your question? Um, you didn't put your hand up. You're not coming up here. I got millions of comments. Let me scroll up and find Randy's question. Let's see. Okay. It's Paul. Can you please answer this? I noticed you had 10,000 bounces. Is that just from incorrect email addresses or are certain email platforms filtering out spam from the links? Could less links get you through to more contacts? Have I tried A-B testing this? Haven't tried it. Don't know why they're bouncing. And I don't care. Does that make sense, Paul? So I just want to interject real quick. It sounds mm -hmm. like to me that um, a lot of people um, do get hung up on this small stuff. And from what you're saying, it, when you answer some of these questions, I get the impression that it's really important to just stay focused on the task at hand for us as realtors and not try to get into other people's reasons for either unsubscribing or bouncing back or technological issues or all of that. We just need to stay focused and move forward. Is that good? Exactly. I mean, you took the words out of my mouth. Like, like most of this stuff, honestly, is uh, most of the questions. I'm like, I don't even care about. Like, it's not even. It's nothing that I even think about. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I cool. think that's what I think that's what we've heard a lot today too. Is that a lot of people are getting stuck in their heads about all the reasons why they may get rejected or this may not work or whatever. And the most important. Uh, message that I've received from you today is just not get hung up on any of that stuff yeah. and keep moving forward at the task at hand. Yeah. Just go, go, go. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. And um, guys, uh, we're going to dip. It's way past, but uh, I wanted to say I'm going to do a, another prospecting workshop 
um, sometime in September, probably like in a couple weeks. So I'll throw out, uh, I'll throw out, uh, I'll, I'll let you guys know when we're going to do that. So anyway, love you guys. We'll see you on the next one. Um, all that good stuff. Keep crushing it. Thank you, Ricky. Bye guys. Thank you, Ricky. Have a great day. Welcome. See ya. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye, thank you. I-35 with the top down. Quit to tell a hater they should get like me. Seem like everybody want to be the boss, but it costs, and these lames ain't like me. Drop a couple bands on the crib.